superhumanize. Accelerated evolution. I'm Ariana Summer, and I have passionately dedicated the last 12 years of my life to creating the ultimate human experience mentally, physically, and spiritually based on the most powerful ancient teachings and cutting-edge modern discoveries and technologies. The Superhumanized Podcast is a show committed to sharing what I have learned from the world's leading experts in order to help you achieve your full potential and create your best life ever. The man who I have the pleasure of speaking with today is literally one of the strongest men in the world. But that's not because he's able to single-handedly throw washing machines like you or I throw a pillow, or because he can carry and walk around with the equivalent weight of a 1,200-pound horse on his shoulders, or because he pulls half a ton with his neck. Patrick Baboumian's physical superhuman feats, which have recently been featured in the movie The Game Changers, are nothing compared to the strength of his compassion. Through his career as a Guinness World Record-breaking athlete, Patrick is setting a massive sign that it's not necessary to eat animal protein to be a real man or a world-class athlete. I hope the story of Patrick Baboumian, aka the vegan badass, will inspire you and open your mind to the idea that compassion is our greatest strength, that the choices we make as individuals about what lands on our plates have profound effects on ourselves and our planet, and to never stop challenging ourselves to become the best versions we can be. Patrick, it is wonderful to have you here. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, it's it's an absolute pleasure and a privilege. And we just had the best time last night. Um, you took my husband Clay and I to the Game Changers premiere with your lovely wife Kati and you. And it was just amazing and a fantastic movie. And for those people who don't know about this movie yet, I'm just going to take a quote from off the internet. The Game Changers, fueled by the truth, is a new film executive produced by James Cameron, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan that documents the explosive rise of plant based eating and professional sports, mixing real time groundbreaking science with cinematic stories of struggle and triumph. And you are actually one of the lead characters this documentary follows. Please tell us about this truly game-changing movie and how you became a part of this. Yeah, so the idea in the film is to um, um, just basically uh, show elite athletes and uh, show the way that they eat. Um, because uh, there, there's, um, in, there's a lot of misconceptions when, when it comes to nutrition, especially mm -hmm. within athletes. And especially in them. So, so I'm like kind of as deep as you can get in uh, in the realm of misconception that that, that is out there because um, I'm I have pr pretty much uh, spent all my uh, career in the fitness world mm -hmm. and in the uh, world of strength sports and that's where the most misconceptions are and it begins with the idea that um, people put too much emphasis on protein now I'm not saying that protein is not uh, is not um, a big part of uh, um, of the success of these athletes but um, sometimes uh, athletes just forget all the other parts of nutrition that are uh, really important um, and by focusing too much on like a reductionist kind of um, um, mindset where you dissect your macros and then you, you think like you, you're giving um, this and that, you know, as this percentage of, of carbs and then protein and so on. And, and then you, your body is going to like, like, a, like a calculator is going to just give you the mm. output that you want. And that's not the case because that's completely ignoring the dynamics that happen in your body and so on. So um, the idea in the film is to show, uh, to tackle spe specifically the misconceptions that are out there about uh, um, a plant-based nutrition mm -hmm. and about the feasibility of a plant-based nutrition when it comes to peak performance mm -hmm. for athletes. Um, and it it also touches uh, the uh, you know health issues uh, and and uh, stuff like that that is not only relevant for athletes but basically relevant for everyone uh, who wants to uh, have an active life and and wants to be um, just 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 basically uh, be able to perform at a high level in their everyday life. It doesn't have to be uh, someone who is engaging in uh, competitions. Right, and I would uh, think it's a fair guess to say that most of humanity wishes for that, you know, optimize longevity and well-being. And what I really, really loved about The Game Changers was the very positive, heartfelt, 
approach um, backed by a lot of science, but also a lot of humor and how they followed um, really some world-class athletes such as yourself and Olympic medalists who through a plant-based diet actually performed much better than they did before or you know they the the recovery rate from injury was just sped up so so much yes I, I always say that um, what's really important in the film in my eyes is actually the science that we have in there mm -hmm. because that's the actual information but unfortunately uh, most most people um, just uh, don't react as well to um, to information as it actually should be because it's just boring. <laughs> so we athletes basically uh, are just a vehicle to to um, at 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 the one side um, demonstrate the science in action because you know what what we do is is just like a, a test of the of the science that um, we have in the film uh, and and a proof that that it's not only theory but but you can put it into practice. Uh, and at the same time, we are also a vehicle to tell a story so that yes. the film is not just a boring documentary about scientific uh, facts about nutrition, but it's uh, actually a film that is uh, entertaining and specifically entertaining for someone who... Um, so the, the idea is we're, we don't want to reach out to people who are already plant-based because they're going to probably... Um, uh, agree with us anyway <laughs> well, we want to reach out to people who um, basically uh, are probably even convinced that a plant-based uh, diet wouldn't work for them because they think like I'm an athlete I have these needs and and um, uh, these preferences and for me personally uh, I need the nutrition the way it is now and I need meat or whatever animal products they they use these are the people that we want to reach out to. So the idea was to make a film that is uh, entertaining, that is fun to watch, and at the same time contains all the science to back up the um, uh, the message that you, no matter in which sport you are, no matter what kind of uh, performances you're trying to have or what output you're trying to uh, create, everyone can do better with a plant-based nutrition. And we're backing that up with, mm -hmm. um, with, with the science and with the little experiments that we have in there. Mm -hmm. So we, we also have some experiments that are... Oh, yes, I have one particular one I want to talk oh, about yeah. later. I, I, have, <laughs> I have a suspicion. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, one thing about athletes, of course, is it's not just um, they're looked up to for peak performance, but they're cultural icons. People yeah. look uh, for leadership, um, for living by example in so many different areas of life. Um, Athletes are the superheroes of today, in a sense. And the types of athletes that were featured in the movie, it was just fascinating. From the um, originator, the gentleman who actually came up with the idea, James, James. Wilkes, who is a lethal... <laughs> um, a um, weapon. Oh, my God, uh, MMA fighter. And how he actually took down McGregor, who was basically... Oh, well, pardon J me. James didn't. Yeah. James didn't. Uh, the other gentleman. Well, that was uh, um, Nate Diaz. Yes, that was hilarious to see how actually he was taunted by McGregor by, you know, he's a plant eater and how McGregor is going to pound him into the ground in the ring and the opposite happened. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's just basically what happens when people think that there are um, cats. McGre <laughs> McGregor thought he's a lion and he should eat like a lion. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. I mean, I'm plant based, but I don't eat like a cow. You know, I don't eat grass. And if you go and start as a human being uh, to eat like, you know, carnivore, carnivorous uh, um, animals do, uh, that's not going to work with your biology. Um, and, and I think that's like a, a big part of, uh, of, of the weird culture that is in uh, some parts of fighting sports and, and sports that are mainly, uh, um, you know, have masculine attributes, mm -hmm. uh, like the sport that I'm doing, like strength sports and, and, and stuff like that. Um, the guys have this weird culture where, you know, they're, they're coming up with these predatory animals and they're mm -hmm. identifying mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, a lion can produce their own vitamin C. So for them, it's okay to eat meat all the time and uh, they're not going to get into, into problems. But if you do that as a human being, um, well, you know, Scarvy, <laughs> you're going to lose your teeth and you're going to just just fall apart if you do that. And and they, they just don't realize what, what they're doing to their, to their bodies. Right. And that's an overall problem. So, so the extreme form of that would be the carnivore diet, which is complete bullshit. Uh, but there are people who try to do that and most of them really fail, but they 
you know they they understand that when it's when it's too late uh, but then the uh, the mild form of that is actually what we see out there in in society like the western diet itself mm. it is way too heavy in meat way too heavy in animal products yeah. and that just makes us sick and 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 that's that's not me saying that because I want people to eat more plants, but it's me saying that because that's what the science says. So when you look at the numbers, our number one, you know, all the di diseases that are the number one killers, like, you know, diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, certain uh, um, types of, uh, uh, of cancer or uh, heart disease, these are the number one killers in, in the Western world. And they're all uh, associated with uh, um, heavy and animal uh, animal protein heavy way of meeting uh, of eating of meeting <laughs> the, yes absolutely there's right so there. much science to back it now yeah. and it's also so easy to see any problems that you might have um, caused by your diet to get reversed sometimes even within seven days you know you take um blood samples for cholesterol or other uh, biomarkers and the levels just go down the levels of inflammation your bad cholesterol and so on and so on and you just as we saw in the movie people start performing better when they eat this plant-based diet and just for yourself uh, to get some of our audience up to speed how many world records did you break to date mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I had, um, before I went uh, um, vegan, mm -hmm. I already had a lightweight world record, uh, and that was when I was vegetarian. Mm -hmm. So um, that's uh, that was back then my only world record, <laughs> my only one. <laughs> um, and then I went uh, completely plant-based in 2011, in late 11, and then in 2012 I broke two heavyweight world records, and the one was a keck lift world record, um, and then the other one was a front hold world record. Mm -hmm. The keck lift one was, uh, um, I did that uh, as, as part of a strongman uh, challenge, uh, and, and that was recognized by, by strongman federations. And then the other one was a Guinness world record. Um, and then I did a third one in 2013, I think, for the first time. Uh, and that was uh, a yoke world record. And the idea there was, so the yoke walk is one of the heaviest walks, one of the most punishing, basically, events that we have at, in strongman competitions. Mm -hmm. And usually you have a fixed weight, and then everyone does the same weight, but you try to be as fast as possible for, for your distance. And I came up with this idea that it would be, you know, entertaining to take that to an extreme <laughs> and try to just do it as heavy as possible your idea of fun <laughs> so yeah that, that, that's my idea of having fun just it. breaking all your bones yeah. in your body <laughs> so so basically um i reached out to all the strongman uh, federations out there uh, all the big ones like you know the organizers of the um uh, world's strongest men the organizers of the uh, arnold's classic all the big mm -hmm. events i reached out to them and asked them for the heaviest yoke they ever done mm -hmm. and then i just made it much heavier than that. So, so the heaviest that I uh, found was, I think, something about um, what was it a thousand thousand pounds or eleven hundred pounds or something like that. And I went for twelve hundred pounds something. So, so in, I don't even know it in pounds, but it's in kilograms. It was a five hundred fifty-five kilogram yes. yoke walk. Um, Basically, I, the weight of a big horse. <laughs> that's kind of a horse, yeah. Uh -huh. that, that's that's a mid-sized horse, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and and I obviously, for for obvious reasons, I wouldn't use a horse for that. <laughs> but but I used a metal implement called a yoke. Uh -huh. uh, you have uh, you you can put plates on it, white plates, um, and then um, the distance was uh, ten meters, uh, and that was the distance that. Um, the heaviest one they ever did before that that was at the Arnold and I think they did uh, 10 meters so I admit they did the same distance but with a much heavier weight mm. um, and uh, I broke that so that was recognized by uh, by Guinness and I uh, broke that uh, record in 2015 so and, and in 15 uh, that's four years into being vegan so mm -hmm. because one argument that comes up a lot is that people say well he was already strong before he went vegan so he yeah. built all his muscles before he went vegan and then he he was just maintaining that so that's not the case i was able to break my own personal records and also the world records years into veganism yes um i actually had my peak in all the lifts in 2016 right before i had an injury um and then um um, decided to to retire um, and in 2016 where, where I had my peak that's 
half a decade into veganism and mm-hmm. if you you know if if you do something for half a decade you're not maintaining anything that you have done like you know 10 years Correct. before that right so. and i love what you uh, just talked about when you basically broke the record in yoke carrying weights there's a brilliant uh, video that was filmed on stage by rich roll he has it on his youtube channel and i love the moment you actually did it you succeeded you're actually you say you're yelling vegan power <laughs> i can't even do it like you but it was brilliant yeah. and i mean you're the guy who for fun throws uh, washing machines you can pull half a ton with your neck and crazy amazing feats like that and obviously there's a lot of physical preparation to be able to pull this off but do you have a mental routine to prepare yourself for this moment where it's all or nothing Hmm. yes so um obviously as you said the the mechanics of the feet are physical Mm -hmm. so it's just basically your body that that does it but before you can get to a point where you are able to do that, uh, it's a journey. So, so mm-hmm. you know, you have years of training that you have to do. And all of that has a lot to do with your, with your mindset. It has a lot to do with the way that, uh, you know, you're uh, approaching. Um, and I always say um, everything that I do um, for, for, for the sport and that matters if you succeed or if you don't succeed, it translates into your everyday life. Mm -hmm. So your mindset plays a big role, how you handle the pain, how you handle setbacks when, you know, when you just have a bad training day or you even hurt yourself and that sets you back for for, for a month. Um, if, If you're not mentally able to take these things, then you will never get your body to be in a position to Mm -hmm. do that feat. So um, and and I think it's safe to say that nobody um, has a uh, has genetics to be able to do that without that journey of training. So even if you are very gifted genetically, you will still need years of training to get to that point. And for that, um, everything that uh, that that you do with your body starts first in your brain mm-hmm. it starts first in your mind you and you have to know what you want to um to to get to your goal so so if you're um for instance um it, it really depends um why you do the things you do because um if it, it is a huge challenge and uh it involves pain it involves a lot of you know sacrifice and if you don't have a really good reason to do it you will probably quit at some point mm-hmm. because you know it's, it's it's just a lot that you have to swallow for it um and um that's something that i also um that i also experienced that um w- after i went plant based and i realized that it was you know it was doing so much for my performances and it was doing so much for my health i kind of developed this notion that this would be my new mission to go right. out there and, and yeah mm-hmm. and tell people uh, how it is and and that's um, just just how great i feel and how great um it's been for my life um and that actually put another completely different dimension mm-hmm. uh onto everything that i do in terms of sports so this wasn't not this was not not uh, just about me anymore and right. you know my will to succeed and my will to be competitive and um, and to beat my uh, my opponents but but now it was also about proving that there are these dangerous misconceptions out there that make people sick and that um, are terrible because they lead to the kind of uh, a- animal agriculture that we have now that treats animals like uh, objects and 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 that again leads to uh, all the environmental problems that we have deforestation and deforestation and um clim- uh, the, the effect on climate change and all these bad things that happen they all have to do with um the idea that we need a lot of animal products Absolutely. and that's not the case yes. so 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 this gives mm-hmm. a completely different dimension to everything that i do yes and what you just said about mission and purpose i think this is when we want to overcome what we think are our human obstacles to reach a certain goal when we find this deep rooted purpose anything is possible you know because we give it more than all when we are going for something that is bigger than just the sum of ourselves and you just mentioned it i mean we know all the problems that um, cons- the consumption of animal proteins is related to it's uh, of course animal welfare it's health individual and societal deforestation as you mentioned social justice and so on um and the funny thing is uh, you know you can talk to people a lot about this what i really loved about the movie 
movie to get back to game changers was, you know, let's say you talk to people, oh, don't you want your brain to function better? Don't you want to take a little bit better care of your heart? And they'll be yawn. But uh, when you ask them about, hey, how about um, being better at sexual performance? Everybody goes, yes, yes, yes. And there was this scene in the movie where um, this scientist was actually conducting an, exper an experiment with um, uh, athletes, um, uh, college athletes, and measuring via a contraption that was attached to their manhood the quality and the duration and the amount of their erections during nighttime. And <laughs> my favorite scene, right? Would you want to reiterate that for us? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, so the guy is Aaron Spitz. He's actually mm -hmm. here from the area. Um, I think he's uh, based in Laguna Hills. Mm -hmm. um, oh no! Now he's gonna get a lot of fan mail. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, his name uh, is Dr. Aaron Spitz. He's a great person. It's uh, it's great to party with the guy. He's really a character. <laughs> um, and what he's doing in the film is just basically making a little experiment um, to see if uh, you would have an effect. Um, just with one meal, so mm -hmm. so um, the, the experiment's uh, um, variation is uh, just giving uh, these college athletes just one meal and uh, they um, vary it between, in the one case they get one meal that is uh, a burrito mm -hmm. that is meat-based and then in the other case they get a burrito that is plant-based. And they just watch uh, um, what happens at night when they sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so they get uh, they get a little device that just measures basically um, your um, uh, your erections mm -hmm. and makes that like translates that into numbers mm -hmm. of uh, hardness and <laughs> duration and, yeah, amount duration and and how many you have. Uh -huh. So I think these are the the, the three things that they measured. Um, and then they get a feedback for that, and it's it's just an absolutely glorious uh, scene because it was beautiful. I mean, uh, the one thing is that Aaron Spitz is just such a character, but then also the reactions of the college uh, um, the co the college athletes. Uh, it's so funny because they're like kind of embarrassed by <laughs> by the feedback that they get. And the important thing is that um, the so so the numbers of course this is not uh, a scientific uh, approach this is just a little experiment but still um it is very um impressive that uh, the numbers really show that it has a huge effect if you have a plant-based uh, burrito instead of a meat-based burrito in terms of giving you like um you know a, a much um, um, bigger uh, amount of of erections yes that comes spontaneously. Um, and that's due to a very simple uh, fact um, that uh, mostly uh, meat-based uh, foods just um, um, inhib inhibit your blood flow. Uh, and everything that inhibits your blood flow and that kind of, you know, clogs your ba uh, arteries and, and, and that um, is basically bad for your blood flow mm -hmm. is bad for your erections because mm -hmm. you know erections are based on having bl uh, blood down there absolutely so if you have problems in that department you know it's actually part of a bigger picture to you know put a serious note on that and uh, so what was so interesting about this experiment is that this one meal had such a huge no pun intended effect on the um, a young athletes who undertook it and yeah. You know, here at Superhumanize, it's all about leveling up, optimizing physically, spiritually, mentally. And one of the most important pillars this leveling up is built on is my AVAP philosophy, as vegan as possible. And for people out there who are not yet completely open for going fully plant-based like we are, but just try it out. Maybe, you know, 24 hours, maybe a week. The changes that you're going to see are going to be uh, massive um, <laughs> to tie back in with that experiment, <laughs> but not only in that department. And and you mentioned the physical aspects of what this is what just one meal did for these young athletes. But what happened to you when you switched from a vegetarian to a vegan diet? Can you break down some of the more biochemical processes in the body, for example, concerning iron or mm -hmm. metabolism? Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it was just basically two steps. I first went vegetarian back in 2005. Mm -hmm. um, I was vegetarian for uh, at about six years. And then in late 2011, I switched to a vegan diet. So um, what that does is it gives me kind of an insight in what all these different diets did to my body. And mm -hmm. it's interesting because I can compare them to each mm -hmm. other. So when I did the first step and I went uh, vegetarian, what happened is, and now back then I was completely naive in terms of um, that it 
would potentially do any good for me to give up meat, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just doing it because um, I, I just realized that I love animals and uh, I was rescuing animals on a regular basis mm-hmm. and, and you know trying to help them put a lot of time and energy into trying to rescue these animals. And at the same time, I was eating meat. So I realized that was mm-hmm. weird. Uh, and that was what, what made me uh, go vegetarian just because I thought it's more in line with my values that I had. Um, I didn't expect anything good to happen to my training, and I was surprised because my performances went up uh, for the six uh, for the first six months. Um, I really uh, um, improved on all uh, areas. Um, I, I got heavier and stronger, um, but I didn't, you know, um, my my training back then wasn't that important because I wasn't even competing. Uh, in that stage, I was getting my A degree in. Uh, um, uh, in, in evening school and I was just focusing on doing that while having three different jobs. So uh, the training was just on the side, but it was still improving a lot in the first six months. Um, I did that for six years, uh, but while I was doing really well uh, in terms of training, I developed some uh, some some uh, issues that were, and I know that now that they were associated with with my dairy intake, and I was mm-hmm. having huge amounts of dairy, um, but um, I didn't know that back then. So um, one one of those issues was uh, an iron deficiency. So I would be iron deficient, and I would even supplement iron, and um, would still be deficient. Uh, Can today, you explain the biology behind that? Yes. Mm-hmm. So today I know that um, it the, the deficiency came due to a process uh, that has to do with the dairy. It's just basically that if you have big amounts of dairy, it uh, blocks your iron intake. Mm-hmm. So when you have something that blocks your iron intake, um, it doesn't even matter if you supplement it because the problem is not that there is not enough iron there. The problem is that your body doesn't absorb mm. it well. Um, and dairy is not the only thing that does that. Uh, bl- black coffee does the same thing. Yeah, I and love tea. Coffee. I know, me too. Yeah. And and tea does it too. And here comes the good news. Uh, I love coffee too, mm-hmm. and I also drink black tea from time mm-hmm. to time. And I still do it today, but I don't have any issues. Problem was that the dairy. I don't know if it's more potent, but I can definitely tell you that I was having very big amounts of dairy. So it depends how how much you have it. Like. If you don't drink coffee, you know, like um, gallons of it over the day, right. you're going to be f- probably fine. Uh, but if you like, uh, if you supplement iron or you have something, you, you know, some food that is iron rich, you want to probably separate it from the coffee so that it can't um, um, get in the way of the absorption. Um, with, with the dairy, the problem was I was having it all the time. I was mm-hmm. having it during the whole day. So it was uh, blocking my iron intake all the time. Uh, once I gave that up, the iron deficiency just went away. So that was one of the first mm-hmm. things that I um, that I noticed when I uh, went vegan. Then uh, another thing is um, that I always, throughout my pretty much all my life that I can you know remember, uh, I always had uh, problems with reflux and, and heartburn. Mm-hmm. Um, that just went away after two days, and that was one of the main things that I was really um, anxious about because. Um, back when i was still having dairy products i would use the dairy products as kind of a um antidote to um to my heartburn because when you drink milk and you have heartburn it actually in in on the on the first uh, um in the first moment it actually helps mm-hmm. uh and i think that's due probably to the calcium that is in the milk uh calcium is alkaline so that can counterbalances Makes some of sense. them yeah, some of the iron, uh, not iron, so some of the acid that you have in your in your stomach. Um, problem is that once you start digesting the protein, um, you get um, you get to a point where uh, something comes into play that has to do with the uh, amino acid profile of animal proteins uh, compared to plant proteins. So animal proteins, and it doesn't matter if they're from dairy or from meat or from eggs. They are always very rich in sulfur-containing amino acids. Mm-hmm. So, so two of the 21 uh, amino acids are uh, contain sulf- sul- sulfur in, in in their molecule. And when you metabolize them, what basically happens is that you get sulfuric acid as a byproduct. Mm-hmm. And that was causing my acid problem. And it came actually from the dairy. So while I was thinking the dairy would help, 
because that was the first effect it had, right. it was actually causing the problem. And it was a vicious circle. And because I was having it every day, I didn't realize that it's com that it com mm. came mm. from the dairy. Um, it just took me two days and my reflux problem was Brilliant. gone for good. And, and that's like for the last eight years. Um, I haven't had any problems. I mean, from time to time, like once a year or so, if I just eat way too much fatty stuff, yeah. it can happen. But this that's something that happens, as I said, very seldomly, while back in the day, I would have it every day. And talking about eating a lot, I mean, you're one of the strongest men in the world. Uh, how does your daily regimen look like? How many meals do you eat? Uh, where do you get your, your, you know, your protein, your energy, your micronutrients from? Break it down for us. Yeah. So <clears throat> for me, one of the um, main things that I have to take care of is, as you said, to get enough protein mm -hmm. uh, and also to get enough calories. Because you have to think, um, when, when I was competing, I was competing in a heavyweight dis uh, division. Um, and the heavyweight division in, in, in strongman is... Like, you know, in the normal sports, you're competing against, I don't know, 250 pound guys or so. In strongman, you're in the heavyweight uh, division. It's it's open, you know, like open end. So, <laughs> so there's no limit to how heavy these guys can get. And you're competing against guys who are sometimes up to almost seven feet tall. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so they're huge guys yeah. and they weigh up to 400 pounds or even heavier. So they're like giants, uh, and I'm not. I'm a pretty short guy. So um, for me to be competitive against uh, these huge men, I would have to try to be as heavy and as strong as I can be. And mm. for that, it just takes a huge amount of calories to take in. Um, and that is actually something that some guys uh, who go plant-based struggle with, because if you eat very healthy and you eat, you know, a lot of whole foods um, and and health foods. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to get a lot of volume and a lot of um, uh, fiber, which is mm -hmm. a good thing because, sure. you know, it's, it's health-wise, it's a great thing. But for guys who want to be big and who want to, you know, get as many calories as possible and uh, uh, enough protein and all, um, they need to eat lots of calories. And for them, it can actually be in the way to have too much, uh, too much fiber because it's going to make you full. And then if you don't right, eat enough, correct. You, you're losing weight. And that's what happens to a lot of guys. Um, and then they fail. And so, so I, I met like, well, when I say a lot, I mean like probably five people in those eight years. Um, I, I've met some, uh, some guys that said, well, I tried it for a time, but I lost so much weight. I was feeling great. I was feeling healthy and all, but I was getting smaller and smaller. And that's why I gave it up. So what I'm... Uh, I'm always sharing my way to do it because I think that helps people mm -hmm. not fail yes. uh, at it. And what I do is just I basically get a lot of my calories just in liquid form. Ah, so and smoothies. Smoothies mainly and, and also protein shakes mm -hmm. or, or shakes overall that I uh, do with uh, plant-based uh, milk alternatives or um, whatever I can get my hands on. Um, and that helps a lot uh, to get enough calories and even if you're not really hungry. Uh, because it's just um, so. So the one thing is that it's easier to get more calories that way, and then the other thing is it's also more practical mm -hmm. because I'm traveling a lot yes. and Quick, so efficient. Yeah, and so so most strong men they would sit down and and eat six to eight meals a day. That takes a lot of time too, yes, right? Exactly. Especially if you're training a lot, it takes away from your time to train or to rest. Exactly. Plus, your body has to do a lot of work digesting. Exactly. So I found it uh, much more practical to just have a lot of those calories in liquid form. And that, uh, interestingly enough, that's not something that I invented after mm -hmm. going vegan. I've done the same thing with a mixed diet and uh, and when I was a vegetarian. Mm. So the, it, it wasn't a reaction to you know, um, having a harder time as a vegan to, to get the calories, but it was just something that I came up with pretty early in my career. Um, and being actually a pretty lazy person, mm -hmm. I just found out it's so much easier to do it that way than to sit down and eat six to mm. eight meals a day. Um, and, and I also had good success with it. So, you know, my performances, I was always happy with them. So, um, and I was always hearing these other athletes complain about, how nasty it is to just eat the whole day. And I was like, 
well yeah i love food I, but i can't even begin to imagine <laughs> that's torture and, and that's actually the uh, one of the worst uh, things when, when i speak of sacrifice mm -hmm. that's one of the worst <laughs> things because you know imagine i'm really someone who eats i love to eat great mm -hmm. food um and when you get to a point where you stop um um enjoying it that's terrible that takes away True. like you know the, the 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 most fun or one of the most fun parts of life oh, so for sure. um so doing it the way i do um is not only practical but but it also preserve this uh this the joy of, of enjoying great food right yeah. and you know there's um something that probably a lot of people don't know about you but you studied psychology Yes. And I have a particular question to you. What we're dealing with nowadays when we're looking at the consumption of animal proteins, a lot of people completely disassociate the product mm. from the living being that the product actually originates from. Uh, how can we help people emotionally, psychologically connect the dots? And what has caused this disassociation in the first place? Yeah, so, so you're completely right, and that's actually something that I realized back when I uh, when I made the decision to go vegetarian. I asked myself, why am I in the one case I see an animal in the in the in the forest, mm -hmm. and I see them suffering, and I have this natural reaction that I think I want to help this mm -hmm. living being, I want to stop the suffering. Um, and then in the other case, I go to a supermarket, I just buy something that involves suffering and mm -hmm. involves the death of an animal. Um, and I'm just buying it. I don't even have a bad feeling about it. How? How? And that's exactly um, um, w what you just said. And I was wondering why? Why is that happening? So I think, or it's it's pretty clear that it's not a coincidence. It's not something that happens by chance. But it is um, the industry doesn't want you to connect the dots. It, it doesn't want you to understand that if you buy this product, there is pain, there is mm -hmm. suffering, um, there is a terrible um, 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 fate of, of a sentient living being that is behind that product. Because if if you would, you know, have all these thoughts, you would feel terrible buying, you know, every time you would go and buy meat, it, it, it wouldn't be fun. Mm. Um, so obviously, they they don't want you to, to, to make the connection here. Um, so if we want people to uh, to make the connection, we, we kind of uh, because all, all of this um, is is basically a basis on on um, kind of a I don't want to say propaganda, but it's a made up worldview, a made up kind of uh, a kind of setting that uh, the industry creates for you where you can go into a building and buy these sterile looking, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, uh, not bloody, that, that's right. I think like something that, that is important. You, you don't get, you know, you, you don't see blood and, and body parts everywhere, mm -hmm. but actually if you go into a slaughterhouse, that's what you see. Yes. You see blood and it looks like hell and there are screams and there are all these things. So one thing that you can do, but I'm not sure if it's the most um, if it's the most um, uh, like effective thing to do is just show all these horrible parts uh, of the story that are hidden away from the uh, by the industry. Uh, problem with that is. And there are a lot of uh, animal rights organizations out there mm. that, that do that. Yes, they're just, trying to criminalize it now too. So we're dealing yeah, with or, that. Yeah, or you know, just just uh, so so one part uh, I think that's what you mean is uh, to break in into mm -hmm. the facilities mm -hmm. and and show that. Um, of course, the industry tries to criminalize that. Um, but uh, an another thing is there is al already so much imagery out there. So yes. if you just want to tell that uh, side of the story, you can find like hours and hours of terrible footage out there that you can show to people. The question is, does that really help? Mm. And now that's when <laughs> my psychological background kicks uh -huh. in. So um, with some people, it will help. Uh, it will help with people who are very strong mentally because um, what you see there, the suffering and all those horrible images, that takes a lot of mental strength to um, to to be able to watch that, yes. and to be able to react to that in a um, rational fashion, and 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 that's the best case. And the best case, somebody would watch it and would say, "Well, this is something that I would never 
approve mm. that I don't want to cause, so I'm going vegan right away. Yeah. And that's the perfect scenario. But in, I would guess, 80% or even higher percentage of cases, that's not what happens. Most people, um, and that's not, you know, I'm, I'm not judging anyone on that, but uh, we're just basically not made to be strong enough to watch that. Because um, we're, 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 we're biological beings mm -hmm. and um, we, we are um, in, in a normal life uh, that, that our ancestors had, you would see stuff like that very seldomly in your life. So to, right. to see someone die in front of your, uh, you know, to, to see someone die or, you know, those horrible images, you don't, uh, our psychology and our brain is not made to see that on a regular basis. Um, and that's actually one, one part of the problem that uh, we kind of um, get numb Mm. by getting too much of that. And that already starts when you watch the news. Sure. So That's when you watch, yeah. No, please go ahead. Yeah, so, so when you watch the news, um, you get presented, you know, disasters and, and all kinds of uh, um, terrible, terrible uh, stuff that happens everywhere in the world. Um, but usually if we were, you know, in our normal setting, we wouldn't see stuff that happens on a different uh, continent. Mm -hmm. But today you are, you know, you, you get all... Yeah, you get that all the time. So what happens is a lot of people just have defense mechanisms because yeah. your brain is not made to digest all of that. Mm -hmm. So it just shuts down. So uh, a certain percentage of people will see the imagery and they will just filter it away. They will not, not even process it. Self-preservation, yes. basically. Mm -hmm. so, so that's one uh, part of the group that is not going to react the way I would want it. Um, and then the other, another part of the group is going to see it. Um, they're not going to filter it out, but they're going to feel bad about it. But they're not going to say, well, um, this is terrible, so I'm going to change my behavior. But rather say, well, this is terrible, so I have to find a way to justify my, my behavior. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. something else that your brain can do. So, uh, And th I think that's something that we have to understand, that we human beings are not, we are not rational beings. We have emotions. Mm -hmm and our brains are very complex and work in mysterious ways. Um, and so when we get information, it's not always going to lead to a rational um, um, reaction, mm -hmm. but, um, but sometimes it can actually lead to the opposite. So that's why I'm very careful with, uh, you know, the, those uh, graphic images and, yes. and, and those things. And also um, I try to, be not too confrontative when, when I speak about uh, all these things. That, while I feel, you, um, you know, coming from an ethical uh, point of view uh, and, and, and going plant-based for that, uh, while I feel, um, you know, the, um, the reason why I did it uh, very emotionally and very deeply, um, when I communicate with people who are not plant-based and uh, who are just not on that standpoint, yet. Um, I, yes, yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to uh, communicate in a non-confrontative -conf yes. fashion and also not, um, you know, I think a huge part of the problem is uh, if you put people under pressure that they think, okay, now this is so much ethical pressure that either I have to go completely vegan right. or I'm going to be a failure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just because they're afraid of, you know, uh, of, of failing. They rather not try. Yeah, yeah. they rather not even go for it. So that's not going to help anyone. Mm. So, so I basically just... Uh, You're compassionate also with human beings. That's what I've admired for a long time about you. What you just said, you're non-confrontative and this is for me just something that makes you so special. You're such a physically strong man. You have huge strength of character, a big moral compass. Uh, you care, you know, for others. You always, you know, you say what's right, you go for it, but you also want to make sure uh, that they can keep an open heart. And there's something about you. You um, grew up um, as a child of Armenian parents in Iran. And the first seven years of your life was marked by quite some upheaval from being in the midst of the um, Iranian revolution, then of course the Iran-Iraq war, and um, also you lost your father and your young sister at a very early age. Mm -hmm. And how has this 
impacted your desire or your life path actually of becoming this strong man in every sense of the word, not just athlete? Yeah, I think my my very early um, fascination for physical strength mm -hmm. um, has a lot to do with um, with just these experiences that I had in my childhood where I just felt powerless. Mm. So um, I, I was feeling small, and um, and then like for instance, just to um, put it into context, when when you would have a bombardment, for instance, mm -hmm. um, I, I was growing up with my mom and with my um, with my grandma. Mm -hmm. Um, and they would be terrified. Mm -hmm. And there was no one in the house to kind of, you know, that there was no uh, male character in, in a traditional sense that uh, who, who could kind of be the strong guy and, and, and uh, um, to lean on to. So there was nothing like that. And I felt like I'm the boy, I should be yeah. that person. But I was small. Mm -hmm. I, I was not really able to deliver on that. And I think that has to do with my with, with my kind of fascination for strength and for um you know being strong enough to be able to help if it's if it's needed mm -hmm. and i actually as a child i had you know like fantasies where where i would imagine myself in a bad situation if something bad would happen to be able to be strong enough to to help other people and and to save people and then also and, and this is like you know, due to uh, the early age that i was uh, that i was having these thoughts i would then imagine myself being the hero and everyone would love me and yeah. i think that has to do with <laughs> uh with with the fact that because my my mom took care of uh took care of me alone she was you know, she she had to go and work all the time, so I was only with my grandma. So um, I I believe that um, I was feeling lonely. Yeah. Um, because you know my my dad wasn't there, uh, of course, and 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 then my mom was away because she was working, um, and I was just I had I just had these this need for love. So I was fantasizing these, how could I be strong and help other people, mm. and then everyone would love mm. me. Um, and I think that has to do with you know me later on go um, going and pursuing sports where you actually turn into the Hulk. So yeah. to say. <laughs> there is a beautiful, beautiful quote from you that I I'd, I'd love to read. Strength must build up, not destroy. It should outdo itself, not others who are weaker. Used without responsibility, it causes nothing but harm and death. I can lift the heaviest weights, but I cannot take the responsibility off my shoulders. Because the way we use our strength defines our fate. What traces will I leave on my path into the future? Do we really have to kill in order to live? My true strength lies in not seeing weakness as weakness. My strength needs no victims. My strength is my compassion. Always gives me the chills. <laughs> but this quote from you, um, dear Patrick, it encapsulates who you are. You are one of the strongest men in the world, but you literally wouldn't hurt a fly. That's what is the case. <laughs> <laughs> Mosquitoes I'm, sometimes, uh, if they're really aggressive. <laughs> 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 and um, I have, I, for, for, for um, just to defend myself, I have to say that <laughs> I, I have this problem. I think they smell, um, they smell your uh, lipids in your in your blood, oh, and yes. because I eat so much, I have a lot of them. Oh. So I'm like always the one they attack. Oh so God, we got to try that I out. Sometimes I have to defend myself. <laughs> Next time I'm in Berlin, we got to try that out. A nice Berlin evening in summer, because I'm usually the one. I'm oh. blood type O negative. Uh -huh. Everybody loves to sit with me because the mosquitoes. <laughs> zzz. Anyways, you know the ultimate goal of a superhero, a superhuman is to save the world. And you actually were a speaker at TEDx in Germany last year, and your opening words were literally that. I'm Patrick Baboumian, and I want to save the world. What is your plan? <laughs> yeah, um, I think um, it's, it's it's just basically, um, if, if you formulate these words, uh, you're going to get a lot of ridicule because people don't, um, you know, um, they they associate with with uh, with those words that it's kind of a megalomania because you think like you know who is mm -hmm. strong enough or who is important enough to save the world. But I think there's a misunderstanding in that because I'm not planning to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. My idea is that if everyone would have uh, would formulate these words like every morning and would mm -hmm. say, well, what can I do today just to make the world a little bit better? 
um, and you don't have to do something huge or something, you know, it, it doesn't have to be um, something that stops everything else in your life. Like for instance, when, when I went plant-based, that put me on track to, you know, some huge things that happened mm -hmm. to my life and that also um, brought me to a point where I was able to influence millions of mm -hmm. people. Uh, via the media and via all kinds of uh, ways that I did outreach with it. Um, but it wasn't something that I had to uh, pay a price for. It was actually something that was positive for my life. It gave back to me much more than it took. So so I was actually uh, doing much better with it than without. So um, I think everyone can do that. It's just a positive approach towards life and, and towards... Um, um, you know, this limited amount of time that we have on this planet. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm, I'm not a religious person, a uh, person in Persian, <laughs> a religious person uh, in, in a traditional sense. So um, I don't really uh, believe in afterlife or anything. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is just this one opportunity um, that I have on this planet. And when I'm gone, I just feel that I want to, um, I want something positive to stay here mm -hmm. that I've done. And, and that's um, not even, I wouldn't even say that that's altruistic because it's actually egoistic in the deepest sense because it gives my existence meaning. Mm -hmm. If I don't do that, I would feel terrible because then why am I here? Mm -hmm. So um, other people have a religion or something which is, which is, uh, um, which is okay, um, but they have a different system to give meaning to their uh, existence. I'm just doing it this way. I'm just trying to give meaning to my to my existence by trying to do something positive before I'm gone. Yes. And you actually um, said it uh, right now. You know, it's you're not looking to do it alone. The superhero hero that we need, we see each morning in the mirror. Exactly. And uh, you know, the that's also one of the beautiful messages in a sense that comes through on a more subtle level in the movie The Game Changers. Uh, because it's about what you as an individual can do to change yourself and your performance, but also the larger environment, because uh, it also touched upon the problems we spoke about before, you know, environment, human health, and so forth. Yeah. Another really um, myth that the movie Blast is a real man eats meat. You know, in fact, one of the producers, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who once had the famous line, you hit like a vegetarian <laughs> <laughs> today is one of the biggest advocates for a vegan diet. And this line has actually become a compliment. How can we um, through the movie, of course, and the, the role that you took, you're redefining what it means to be a man. How can we further this and instill in young boys and girls, because it's actually about power, yeah. being a powerful human. How can we further instill this message? That's like that's actually one of the main things that I'm kind of uh, you know keeping my mind busy with mm -hmm. uh, since pretty much the, the last five or six uh, years. Um, I'm because I'm now retired from the actual competition, so I'm thinking, what else can I do mm -hmm. to contribute to this redefinition of uh, what it means to be a leader, what it means to be strong, and so on. Um, and for me, it comes down to um, you know, if, if you're strong, if, if you're a leader, you are someone who actually protects the group. Yes. So like if you uh, look into the animal kingdom, um, the alpha um, 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 animals are going to be always not only the leader of the group, but they are going to be the main defenders of the group. Mm -hmm. So for me, we now as human beings live in a globalized world, which means if you know no matter if you like it or not um and we see a lot of na nationalism everywhere and yes. and people are trying to kind of fight this reality that we now are a global people mm. we actually we are all one all one um, on the same boat yeah, yeah and this rise of nationalism that that we see everywhere is i think just a reaction to that that people don't feel comfortable with this new reality that is out there but i just take it as what it is and it is a reality we are now um, uh, one, in my eyes, one people mm -hmm. everywhere in the world. So if we want to be responsible and if we want to be true patriots, we should be earthlings. So we yes. should be patriots for the earth. Yes. That means that you have to take you know, responsibility towards environmentalism as your first and foremost uh, um, um, 
um, goal. Uh, for, f and and then after that, it's responsibility for the people, mm. and it's not only for the people you know in your family, but it's not only for people who are f of the na same nation, but it's for everyone that is on this planet, and for me, it also includes um, the environment, and it also includes other animal species, because uh, for me, it is you know I I, I want to be a guardian. Yes. But as a guardian, um, I want to help everyone who, who needs the help and animals suffer the same way we suffer. Absolutely. So for me, it is, um, you know, and, and sometimes people make it a dichotomy like, uh, yeah, you're only caring uh, about animals, but not, uh, not about people. Mm -hmm. For me, you know, we, we're all part of this huge ecosystem. Yes. And there is no difference. And there is no separation. And you mentioned it before, the human brain is not made to see suffering like we do. Yes. And where animals suffer, humans suffer as well. We just need to turn our gaze at the slaughterhouses. People who work in these kinds of industries suffer greatly psychologically and also physically. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. For you, this is um, something I'm very interested in each guest that I have the privilege to receive her here. Um, what are the single most important elements, whether they're mental, physical or spiritual, that help you overcome what we perceive as normal human limitations and become superhuman in a sense? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, first of all, I, I wouldn't define myself as, as <laughs> superhuman, but but I'm actually really interested in, and this is something that I'm interested in for, mm -hmm. for the last 15 years in self-actualization. Mm -hmm. um, and that it's kind of a journey towards be becoming superhuman. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for, for me, the main aspect is that I want to grow on many dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, I want to, you know, when, when I pursue strength or when I pursue um, being, um, uh, being strong i don't do it in one domain it's uh, it's for me it's not really um fulfilling to be very strong physically but then intellectually be pretty helpless mm -hmm. because you know you don't have a um, good education and so on so uh, i try to educate myself wherever i can mm -hmm. learn new things and i think that's that's another thing in society because we are so specialized now mm. um we are almost forced into becoming these um I, I don't know if there's an English word for it, but in German, and you're going to mm -hmm. know what I mean, there's the word Fachidiot. Oh, so, <laughs> society. Uh, something like niche idiot. So you're yeah. very good at one very specific thing in a very small niche. Yeah. And you're like a super brain in that, but the rest of life, you're pretty much an idiot. <laughs> yeah, so society kind of puts puts us in, in a place where we have to specialize to a big degree and right. become fach idiot, <laughs> uh, niche idiots. Um, and I try to overcome that and mm -hmm. I try to, you know, learn about as many things as I can so that uh, um, I just basically have a good um, rational picture of how the world really is and the nature of, of things so that I can make good decisions mm -hmm. uh, and, and that I and that's the ultimate puzzle for me. Um, uh, I sometimes like that happens almost on a weekly basis that I just stare weirdly into the eyes of my beloved wife mm -hmm. and I tell her I still don't understand what this is and with this I mean the human condition mm -hmm. because <laughs> for me that's that's the ultimate puzzle in you know what what is this condition that we're in and yeah. uh, um, and where does it lead to and what are we supposed to do with it uh, and for that I think um, you, you just have to be you know knowledgeable and um, and and curious and that uh, it's it's not so much about knowledgeable, but it's more about being curious mm. about as many things as you can get um, yes. uh, as you can get your hands on, and that's basically what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. uh, the more you know, multifaceted knowledge I can get, um, the the more um, the, the happier I am, and um, that's what keeps me busy most of the time, just trying new things and just having fun. That's a wonderful thing, and by being so curious and doing all the things that you do, you actually have. A quite huge impact culturally on the human condition because you're redefining what it means to prefer to be strong to perform optimally what it means you know to be a man a good human and um, I am so proud to call your friend Patrick and thank you so so much for being my guest thank you so much superhumanize Accelerated evolution.